Hi everybody, this is Michael Hildebrand and I'm your host on the Sleep Trust Podcast, where I'm talking about how to gain back trust in your ability to have a superb sleep again. In this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast, I am going to share the must-have survival tips for a bad night of sleep or better if you experience a bad night of sleep to get energized the next day. So this will really get you pumped up. It's a set of tools that I personally use. It's a set of tools that I share with my clients. And today I'm sharing with you because I know that if you and we all know how it feels to get a bad night of sleep, if we're feeling drained, have no energy, no motivation or suffering, then we can really use these tools to feel energetic over wide periods of the day, to feel good and to thrive instead of only to survive. We'll stay before I start sharing these tips. This is something if you have a bad night of sleep on occasion. So it's nothing that you can use as a papeto mobile that will thrive you even though you have four, five, six nights of bad sleep in a row. There are other solutions for that. But these are must-have tips to get you powered up if you experienced one bad night of sleep. So let's get started right away. You can imagine these tips to work like a power bank. So when our core energy levels are running low, we can, through using these tips, tap into that power bank and recharge our core energy levels. That said, the power bank will be empty at some point too, and we have to get our bodies hooked up to the power supply, kind of meaning we need a good night, full night of sleep again, at least one. So let's get started with caffeine. Most of us already use caffeine to re-energize our bodies, but in regards to what we're doing here, I want you or us to get our head around caffeine in two ways. The first is we want to use it strategically. So we want to be very clear about the times that we're going to use the caffeine to wake us up. And this is not the habitual use that we use to, like we get out, fall out of bed, drink our coffee and so on. No, we're going to, on these days, we're going to think about when we want to drink that. And that should typically be in the late morning when we get a hit through our natural biorhythm and in the afternoon at some point. You know these times and you'll feel them when you get that double hit because your energy levels are low because it didn't get enough sleep, you had a bad night, and now the biorhythm is kind of hitting on top of that and you're going to feel that. So that are the two points where you want to drink coffee. The second thing is to think about coffee in maybe a long, mid or long term um, because the effect washes down on us as we use it frequently, our bodies get used to the effect and so on. So a good thing would be to reduce the coffee consumption on a daily basis. If you're drinking like four, five, six cups of coffee every day, try to reduce that to one or two cups and that way they will serve you much better when it comes to pushing those energy levels up. So that's coffee. What do we want to do instead to wake up if we should not drink the coffee first thing in the morning? And I've got one tip for you or two that are really, ah, probably even three that will really help you out here. The first, that's for all those people out there that are very straightforward, want to see results right away, is a cold shower. You have your warm shower in the morning for a couple of minutes until you're done, and then you tap the switch to cold water. The coldest water that you can get. Uh, Essentially, you will probably start to yasp, So focus on your breathing, breathe in and out very deeply and just stay still. If you do that three to five minutes, you're going to be wide awake. You're probably already going to be wide awake if you do that for 30 seconds. But I recommend to do that for three to five minutes. That's kind of what Wim Hof recommends. And he's the ice man. He really knows what he's talking about. And from my personal experience, I can tell you that the first 30 seconds are kind of unpleasant, so what a surprise. But the longer you stay in the cold water, the better your body adapts. And after three to five minutes, it will feel cold, but not this painful cold, if that makes sense. And that way, if you get out, you're not going to be freaked out to do it again. If you go with the pain, the shock in your body, you're going to remember that and it's going to be much harder to do that thing in future. So 
Do the cold shower in the morning. That's really going to kickstart your body. Do it for three to five minutes so that you're not going to leave the shower shocked. Rather, uh, proud of yourself and wide awake. If you don't want to do that, there is another option. And that would be recommending Wim Hof again because of the breathing technique that he has. If you do a Wim Hof breathing technique in the morning, that will really help you to energize. Best do it before breakfast when your stomach's empty. Um, I've got a podcast on the Wim Hof breathing technique. You can go to sleeptrust.eu and just search for breathing technique, something like that. I'm sure you're going to find it. Essentially, what you're going to do is to have 30, 40 deep breaths in, cycling up and down, up and down, in and out. And then you're going to hold your breath for one, two minutes. What sounds really crazy here is actually a proven and very healthy thing to do. And it's also going to re-energize you and it's going to set you up for the day. You're going to tap into your body. You're going to uh, feel refreshed when, you, when, when you've done that. And it's a very powerful thing to do. So the Wim Hof breathing technique could be for you in addition to the cold shower or if you just want to do something instead of the cold shower. The next thing that we can do is to do something for our cardiovascular system. So go walking, jogging, running, cycling, swimming, anything like that. Do it for 30 minutes at least. And then you're going to feel another rush of energy running through your body. You can do that in the morning. You can do it at some point in the day when you feel that's going to help you. This is also true for the Wim Hof breathing technique, by the way. So I personally also use it. I, I've used it at nighttime. If I have an important phone call or something else and I feel tired because I had a long day, if I do that breathing technique before, like give myself 30 minutes to do it, the, the breathing technique, doing it three or four or five rounds takes me around, around about 20 minutes. After that, I feel super refreshed again, super focused. So you, these are tools. You decide when you need them and when they fit into your day. That's the secret. It's a tool case. It's like you've got this box of tools now and you use them how they fit your day best. You can't have the cold shower if you're in a meeting. Uh, you can't do the Wim Hof breathing technique if you have to um, work on something in uh, the office at the same time. You'd rather have a coffee then. So you really have to take these things and see how they fit into your day. The next thing that you can do is to have a nap. So I recommend that you go for two naps, like on hard days. Keep them short, like 15 minutes roundabout, uh, but give yourself two naps. If you find that time to do that, that can be a wonderful thing to do. If you are, generally speaking, having a good sleep, you could also think, and if it's possible, think about having a one and a half hour nap at, after lunch something like that. But that's only for you if you are generally speaking a good sleeper. If not, that might harm your sleep at nighttime. You don't want that to happen. So then rather stick to short naps um, and that will serve you better. The next tool that you can use is sunlight or light, maybe generally speaking. Light is a powerful factor when it comes to our energy levels, when it comes to starting our days, also when it comes to nighttime, right? We're talking about wearing blue uh, light blockers to prepare us for bedtime. But the other way around works too. Get into sunlight best. Sunlight has the most power. And if you get into sunlight, that's just going to have a positive effect on your body, your inner clock, the SCN, the super chiasmatic nucleus, will pick up on that and tell your body that it is daytime. And you will feel much better naturally than if you were sitting in a dark environment. So try to get yourself out into the light as much as possible. And if you've got a daytime lamp, these are very bright lamps. They spread around 10,000 lux uh, of light. Then turn on that thing in the morning just to kick off the day with light. Very powerful. So I think these were uh, kind of a good set of tips for you. I'm sure that they will serve you. Please think of these as a toolbox. This is your power bank, right? And you choose which tool you're going to use to tap into the power bank. You see what fits your day best 
And I'm sure if you spread a couple of these tips over the course of the day, you're gonna feel high energy levels, maybe not over 100% of the day, but over 80, and that is gonna make such a difference. After you got through that day, you're gonna feel really good, you're gonna feel that you're tired at nighttime, and you're gonna have a superb night of sleep, and that's what we're all looking for, right? So just to give you a little bit of context around what we are doing here today, this is just a quick fix, right? As I said, when we started off this podcast, it's a quick fix for if you have one bad night of sleep, if you have sleeping problems on a regular basis, you can also use these tips, obviously, but there are other solutions for that. I've got a nine step process to bring people from bad, bad uh, quality sleep, low energy levels back to those high energy levels, thriving at daytime, on the foundation of a high quality sleep. But as said, that's a nine step process. This is a quick fix for the days that we all know that we, for what reason ever, weren't able to get a full night of sleep. And the last thing that I've got for you that I wanna add up to these tips is if you wake up at some point and you see that you only have half an hour left to sleep because your alarm's gonna go off, then don't try to fall asleep, rather get up right away. If you don't have at least at least an hour, probably better, one and a half, still to go, yet to go, then get up right away because otherwise you're gonna end up in deep sleep mode when your alarm shoots off and that's gonna give you a really hard start into the day. It's gonna rip you out of a deep sleep stage. Uh, you're gonna feel groggy and bad. So avoid that, rather get a little bit less sleep and start the day energized. And these are really the top tools that you want to fill up your tool case with when it comes to tapping into your power bank. They're proven, I gathered them over the last decade, and I can tell you that every single one of these tips has been used and approved by me, and most of them I use quite frequently. Some of them even on a daily basis if I'm not feeling bad, like not the full program, but sometimes I do Wim Hof breathing technique, sometimes I figure out that I wanna have another cup of coffee, uh, I take a nap, kind of like that. But it's your choice. You can choose if you want to use these or not, or if you just want to suffer over the course of the day. But now you've got that tool case. I hope and I know that you're gonna use these tools to tap into that power bank when a bad night of sleep hits you on occasion, hopefully only on occasion. And before I move on to close up this week's episode, I want to ask you to consider to share this podcast with your friends or colleagues to spread the news because all of us experience a bad night of sleep on occasion, and these tools can be super helpful. You're also gonna help me to spread the message, which I would be very thankful for. And um, yeah, so do that and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And with that, let's wrap up this week's episode of the Sleep Trust Podcast. If on occasion we are faced with a bad night of sleep, there are a couple of tools that can help us to tap into our personal power bank to re-energize over this day. Starting off by having a cold shower, drinking coffee strategically, getting our bodies into movement, having naps over the course of the day, doing sport and getting our body into sunlight are all good options to re-energize and bring us over the day thriving rather than surviving. Please keep in mind that these tips are only meant to help you if you have a bad night of sleep on occasion. If you experience bad nights of sleep on a regular basis, rather go after the cause. I hope you enjoyed yourself and that you tune in next week when we are going to talk about how we want to fix our mindset when it comes to getting high quality sleep on a regular basis. Until then, have a superb sleep. Hey there, and thanks for listening to the Sleep Trust Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you want to get further information on this podcast or material that will help you to gain back your sleep trust, please check out sleeptrust.eu. That's sleeptrust.eu, where you will get lots of information around sleep. And here comes some legal stuff. Everything on this podcast is my opinion only, so do not take it as an advice as I am not a doctor, nor have I considered your personal situation. If you feel that you need medical advice, please consider getting an appointment at your doctor of trust. If you want to give me any kind of feedback on this podcast, 
feel free to email me at podcast at sleeptrust.eu. I hope you tune in again next week and until then, have a good sleep.